Hi there, uh, my name is Chloe Rodet and my artist's name is C-A-R. Uh, we are in my house, my home studio, um, which I share with my flatmate. Um, and uh, today I'm just going to talk you through a couple of different approaches that I take to remixes. Um, I've done two remixes recently, two very different remixes. So I'm just going to go through and show you the differences in how I tackled each one. Um, one was a sort of guitar-led track um, and the other one was a punk track. So very different tracks with very different outcomes and you'll see what I did with them. With the first one, um, it was by an artist named Glock, who's Andy Bell, he's the guitarist from Ride. Um, and I had really lush melodic stems to begin with uh, which is probably closer in line to what I do with my own CAR stuff. Um, I come from a songwriting background um, and I do tend to do things which are quite melodic. Um, the second one was a band called The Imbeciles, an American band, and um, I didn't have as many stems to work with. Um, part of the brief was that I had to use as many of those stems as possible. And so, um, yeah, it was a very different approach. I ended up beginning with something that was a lot more rhythmic, which was a bit of a step in a new direction for me. Um, and as a result of that, uh, you'll see I got a really different outcome. Um, maybe something that sounded quite different from a lot of what I'd done before, which in itself caused a bit, it just made the process a lot lengthier with the label because maybe they got something they weren't expecting but at the same time it's difficult to with to know where things are going to go and once you get an idea in your head or a certain approach in your head to completely change that um I sort of struggled with um so yeah it, it ended up being two very different sounding uh remixes um the thing that I would say that maybe united them both and that across my work is both use an element of my voice at one point. And I think that that is, could be kind of my trademark or the one thing that can unify very different sounding pieces is my own voice. I think a lot of what I do, like I say, I come from a songwriting background and I sort of ended up producing by chance um, I'm not the most technical person. It's something that, you know, it's just is what it is. I know what my interests are. I know what, um, what, uh, what I'm into. Um, I really love like the creative process, uh, coming up with the melodies. Um, I'm not that bothered with the technical side of things. Um, so I think that when I approach any sort of music, I always do it quite intuitively. I'm very much, about happy accidents and I think there's almost a fear that if I were to know too much it would um, I'd lose maybe some of the naivety and some of the rawness that comes from my current approach uh, I think there's a reason I've never spent hours poring over tutorials or really trying to understand that side of things and um, and I think that it is just because I'm quite keen to keep that really intuitive approach. Um, when it comes to remixes or where you go with the remix, sometimes that's brilliant and I end up doing something that uh, or what you know a label will expect. Other times I think that um, because I am working intuitively it is kind of limiting in the sense and I think you'll see this is what's happened with the second remix that I'm going to show you is that I've done something that ended up being a completely different approach to what I'd probably do with my solo stuff just because I found that the original components that I had to work with were quite far removed from the sort of stuff that I'd be doing myself. So I ended up having something that was a lot more driven by the rhythmic side of it. Also, uh, you know, there was a lead vocal that I, I needed to use, um, but it wasn't a lead vocal like I kind of do. There wasn't as much melody to it. Um, 
so I ended up doing something kind of really quite weird <laughs> with it. Um, and, and I think that can sometimes be a problem when you as an artist are trying to, you know, you, you've got an, a, a vision or you've got an approach that you decide to go with. Um, and if that doesn't quite match up with what a label or a band are expecting from you, then it can cause, um, cause some problems. Um, and maybe my lack of technical know-how there would, I wouldn't say, yeah, I, I just think maybe the more intuitive, my more intuitive approach in one sense can be limiting um, because once I get an idea in mind or a direction in mind, it's kind of like, this is what it is. Like, this just seems like the obvious way for me to approach this. And I can't really, you know, I'm, it's harder for me to maybe find a different approach when it comes to remixing. So in those situations, you know, I'm, I'd be, I, I don't think any work is ever wasted. And um, I'd, I'm cool to kind of, you know, if it's not working and both sides or you know, the other side say that it's not working, I'm, I, I'm okay just to throw in the towel at that stage and be like, okay, that's all right. You know, I haven't wasted any time or, um, this one we did end up finding a solution through 11 different versions. We did get there in the end, um, which was great. Um, and I think that actually, even though it was kind of a painstaking process, um, that fact that um, I was given that really strict brief at the beginning to use as many of the original parts as possible made me approach my next remix in a slightly different way. Um, I did use a lot more of the original parts in that remix than maybe I would have before. Um, and I'm really happy I did because you'll see what I've done with them. I've chopped them up and I've used little segments of it. It doesn't sound much like the original, but it's got kind of a, um, a vibe and feel to it, which um, is more in keeping with the original version. Uh, that's all we have time for today, but if you do want to uh, come and see in a little bit more depth how I actually approach um, each different remix um, and the different techniques that I've used for both of those, uh, you can pick up a copy of Computer Music and watch it there.